Hey gang, AV here. Welcome to my review of the G.I. Joe Pursuit of Cobra Storm Shadow the Cobra Ninja. This is from the uh, Desert Battles assortment again. Here he is in the packaging as you can see. Um, he's a blister carded figure with the figure shown in the bubble so you can see the figure itself as well as the vast majority of his accessories. And there is original artwork there on the left hand side featuring the character himself. On the back of the packaging, we can see that he is, in fact, part of the Desert Battles assortment. Um, up here in the top, you have a little blurb that says, G.I. Joe is the code name for the Special Operations Unit of Highly Trained Men and Women. Their purpose is to defend the world against Cobra, a ruthless organization with criminal tentacles in every nation on Earth. Um, said it before and said it again. That is a... Uh, obvious homage to the blurb we used to get during the opening of the cartoon back in the 80s he does come with a file card that you can clip and save which we'll have a closer look at in a second and that's about all i have to say about the packaging i have the figure already opened up but before we get a look at him here is that file card so if you feel like reading it feel free to pause the video and do so now again always a huge fan of the fact that those are included and here is the figure himself. Let's just angle the camera down a little bit. And as usual, we're gonna have a look at his accessories first. Right off the bat, he comes with two claws that he can hold with a handle right there. They are not identical. There is a right and a left. You can tell by the uh, by the length of the claws themselves and the way that they curve down. So this is the uh, this will be his left one and this is his right one. Very cool. I like these. These are actually these always remind me of the uh, the Bruce Lee and or the dragon <laughs> when he was uh, fighting the uh, the guy at the end. Um, he comes with backpack and six swords he's got four in the backpack and two right here that connect as a matter of fact all of the swords connect so he's got four long swords and four short uh, and two short swords but they all have this peg system so they they can connect which is pretty cool. But again, you can only fit four swords in the backpack at once. And I usually go with the four long swords. Um, unfortunately, because of this gimmick, you can't use the uh, both short swords with his chain. Now, as usual with chains, this does feel like metal, but it doesn't respond well to my magnet test. I mean, as you can see, it doesn't really connect at all. It's not magnetic, whatever metal they used. But uh, the rings that actually connect it to the uh, chain, they are magnetic, but the chain itself is not. But anyway, um, he has these two handles with two claws on either side. Inside those claws, you see there are peg holes, which you can peg the swords with pegs into. Oops, don't make a liar out of me. Oh, peg in there. All right. So if you were to do it that way, and you're still left with two long swords and two short swords, you could potentially store all this stuff on the figure. You would just have to get a little creative, that's all. So. Anyway, I'm not going to waste time putting all these back in here, but you get the idea. So you can put all four swords in the backpack have two swords on the chain thing. 
Unfortunately, there's no storage for the claws, but there is storage for his ninja stars, which is pretty cool. He has pegs on the sides of his, uh, shin, uh, I guess leg guards here. And, uh, little ninja swords, stars come off to peg back on. He can kind of hold these if you get creative. A little easier said than done, especially with the shape of his uh, thumbs. They don't really allow for much uh, grasping potential, unfortunately. If you get like two of the prongs in his hand, wedge it in there, he can hold them. Just to prove he can hold his other stuff too. Just claws in there. His chain. Good stuff. Before I lose this, let's peg that back on. And now we'll have a look at the figure itself. Now that the accessories are out of the way, fix this up here again. Very cool design of this guy. He, uh, he definitely looks like he belongs in the desert. Um, he is reminiscent of, uh, of Storm Shadow, but you could get away with using him as a different ninja if you want. Um, he does have... Uh, Cobra tattoo there on his arm, which is pretty cool. Um, he has some yellowing there at the bottom of his pants, which gives the impression that he was walking around in the dirt, in the desert. A cloth goods uh, skirt right here actually helps sell the character, sell the uh, outfit pretty well. This part is, the t is removable if you pop his head off. Good stuff. Cool looking figure. Uh, let's do his uh, articulation now. Heads on a ball joint. You can do a full 360. Slight up and down. A little side to side. Arms. You can do a full 360. They can go up about that high. Nothing at the bicep. Elbows bend 90 degrees. Rotate 360. Rotation here at the wrist. With... Nope, no wrist articulation. I thought he had it, but doesn't look like he does. Ab crunch is, he's got more of a swivel there. There's really not much of a crunch. Um, legs can go up about that high, hindered by his uh, outfit. They can go back about that far. He's got double jointed knees, which can get his heel back about that far. Ankles rotate 360, point his toes down, and point his toes up. Cool looking figure. Very, uh, very impressed with the design of this guy. Uh, definitely a, a, a more creative take on Storm Shadow than we've seen previously to this. Let's get him... Let's do some size comparisons now. Here he is next to vintage V1 Snake Eyes. As you can see, he's noticeably taller. Um, the vintage figures were three and three quarter inches tall, whereas the more modern ones are a lot closer to four inches. Give or take a little bit here and there. Same can be said with the majority of Star Wars figures. Even the modern ones are three and three quarter inches tall. Whereas Suda Cobra G.I. Joe's were closer to four. Here he is next to a vintage Boss Fight Studio Blank. Why did I say vintage? Ugh. Boss Fight Studio Blank. He's relatively new, not vintage. <laughs> My brain is fried. Excuse me. <laughs> Here he is next to a Mar a Marvel Universe Captain America figure. So he scales in very well with the more modern era of... 118 scale figures. He comes with some very cool and unique accessories. I like his paint scheme. I like his outfit design Very cool character. I do recommend that you pick him up. You can find him at a reasonable price um, 
This has been AV. If you like this video, check out my channel. If you like what you see there, then please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.